so the, this the town that, that this happened in the werewolf incident this thing rampaged through a town yeah it rampaged through a little red town um it started up by right rocks is what i'm gonna that's what it's called right rocks it started from there and that's like hmm that's about like 10 miles west 18 miles west or uh, north of Roosevelt and it ran all the way down to Fort Duchesne and the cops just was going after it and that's where it all began was was coming from right rocks and then it goes to Fort Duchesne which is the next one right that's where it was all doing its thing knocking over trash cans dogs barking and everything and then it would just keep going and yeah it was it was pretty crazy they couldn't believe what they were chasing they said it's a freaking werewolf and they heard that on a scanner because uh one of my my family was listening to it and um my son said it was really crazy because he could just hear all of that commotion going on down there and stuff so it was crazy i was like i don't believe that but everybody has different views of what happened at that time you know so yeah it's really crazy and i don't know what it could have been they said it was probably a skinwalker but they said no it wasn't it was it was big it was looked like a werewolf yeah you know? what do you think it was i believe them it must have been a werewolf and in and, yeah. and in ute culture is a is a werewolf is it uh, akin to a skinwalker is that pretty much what it is i don't know i i don't know if it is or not i mean this is a huge i mean skinwalkers they usually have to turn into something that's just is the elk deer whatever it may be and they just you know that's just the size of it but i've never heard of anyone turning into a werewolf or anything like that yeah no, nothing wolf-like yeah wow yeah Cause I, I know in the navajo tradition that that's a very common thing yeah um, but but you but you the utes are actually that that's not that's not something that's that's commonplace to, for, to you guys the, the the skinwalker the um turning into that could oh maybe who knows i i've never heard of it yeah. You know, uh, them they turn into coyotes, you yeah. know, oh, yeah, and uh, stuff. But you got to be very careful too because people do not speak about that here. I shouldn't even speak it here, but um, because they tend to know who you are, you can't say anything in front of anybody about stuff because you don't know if that person's one of them, uh -huh. absolutely. You know, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, let me so tell you something be... after I did my show. Um, and Anthony can attest to this. I, I, I did a show. Uh, was was it the Texas? Was it the Wolfman of Tex Texas Wolfman, or was it? Yeah, I think it was called Texas Wolfman. Yeah, I got threats from a a, a couple different people who claim to be uh, werewolves from my hometown. They were like, "Just just don't talk about it. Stop talking about it. We're asking you nicely, you know." And uh, huh. I mean, that was the first email, and I showed Anthony, I showed my wife, and I was like, what do you think, you know, what is this? And then I got a, a message, you know, from a Facebook messenger that, that was there one day, and then the next day it was, de it was deactivated, and it was another person that, that seemed, that they typed different, like, they looked like they didn't articulate quite as well, and they was kind of a threat, and I was just like, okay. And they just said, look, leave us alone. We'll leave you alone, but stop talking about this. They asked me. You know, they said it again, but this time it was more like or else type thing, you know. And uh, that's been months uh -huh. ago, uh, not a year, over a year ago. And so I haven't had my heart or throat ripped out yet. So I feel, you know, pretty confident. Um, but, you know, I have my own little tricks too. So you never know. I'm just kidding, folks. I'm not going to turn into a wear alligator. Oh, I gave it away. Everybody oh. knows what I am now. No, no I, I just, oh, I, I just, I have my own deals that I, you know, that I have my own little parade that I dance to, you know. 
Uh, and, you yep. know, and so I do. I take my nunchucks and I throw the stars and whatnot, and I do some kung fu, <laughs> and that's they just go away from me. Now, seriously, I I I, I do oh, believe in that. I've always felt yeah. very uncomfortable. I went through the Navajo territory on multiple occasions because I've had to drive back and forth to the Southwest, uh, always against my will. But um, <laughs> my wife's probably at home going like, <laughs> okay. Anyways, I had to go to California because it's not like my favorite place, but. I had to stop. I got so tired, and right outside of uh, the Navajo territory, I know where it's at, you know. And I and I pulled off this rest side, and I went. To, I was like, I'm going to take a nap here. And the next thing you know, I see the largest raven that I've ever seen. And Anthony, you were with me, yeah. And you were asleep here, and that thing was right on the hood. And I, I opened my eyes. I thought it was a vulture. I, and I kid you not, it was a raven. And ravens are huge. They're like wow. gigantic crows. I mean, it's just this, and, and they were yeah. just everywhere. And so I got out of my truck and I was like, get off my truck. I was shooing them away, you know. And I look uh, right right in the distance and I see this weird looking, I, I, I guess it was an elk. I mean, it was just, it, it, it was in a distance. I couldn't see exactly in the, in the early morning haze, whether it was a deer or an elk or what, but it had this huge uh, rack. And I look, and I said, that has to be an elk. And then it just, like, it just went over the, the, the little ridge. And uh, so I just was like, okay, maybe I'm imagining that, you know. And so I look, I turn around, and all the all the ravens are gone. And I don't know where they went. And so then I go into this, like, uh, rest stop or whatever, like, further down. Like, I got in the, in the vehicle and it took off. And we got to this rest stop. And I decided that that's where I was going to 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 take a nap because I didn't want to <clears throat> stay at that first place because it just seemed too ominous. It seemed too weird and desolate. So I get there, and th- there is where – I mean, like, as soon as I drove in, there were just a bunch of these blackbirds everywhere. And they even had one jumping around in the bathroom. And I was like, what in the heck is going on? And so it just felt like – I felt uneasy – I felt uncomfortable. I felt an, an imbalance, and I felt like <clears throat> like there was just something not correct. I don't know. I just I don't like stopping through that area. I don't like driving through that area. I just feel like you know. And I've gotten so many weird stories out of that area that it's just you know I just don't like it. And so I just decided, well, I'm 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 just really really exhausted. So I was I waited till like it was daytime, you know, and I and I went to sleep for a couple of hours. Um, but it was, you know, I didn't get very good rest, and I just that was that was the most time I ever spent. Uh, you know, usually I just drive through there as fast as I can. I just don't like that area. Yeah, I get a very uncomfortable. Yeah, feeling. it's pretty. Yeah, it's very spooky through that area. They said, do not pick anybody up either. Mm-mm. Just go, nobody up. Don't spend the time there. Just keep on going. Yeah. I learned but my lesson the hard way of, on that one, too. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, I was driving through there one, one time, and I see this guy. He sta- he seemed harmless enough. He was standing on the side of the road. I mean, he he he, he was very native looking. Um, he was, he was holding a deer head and he was covered in blood. So that should have been the first clue that I probably shouldn't have picked him up. Um, but then he got in the truck and he, he, he kept like stabbing the dashboard and talking about his brother. Yeah. My brother made good head cheese. And he kept doing that over and over again. Oh wait, no, no, that was a movie I saw. Never mind, never mind, folks. I'm, I'm, I'm getting them confused. I'm just kidding. That never happened. I opened the door and kicked him out. And- no. The scene from the Texas out? Chainsaw Massacre. That's yeah, Texas that is. Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever folks like have he ever pulls seen out a pocket knife and starts cutting, cutting his, his hand, hand, acting all crazy. <laughs> He's like, my, my brother, my yeah. brother makes good head cheese. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I don't know if my brother makes good head cheese, but his head looks like a big block of cheese. He's got the biggest head in the world. <laughs> but uh, yeah, him and my oh, dad gosh. both have like gigantic heads. I don't know what the heck that is. I mean. But uh, oh I just figured my I filled my body out to match my head, and they didn't. So that's that's what I think. But uh, my brother's got like this gigantic baby head. I always tease him. Um, no, no, I never picked anybody up on the on, folks. I didn't do that. I did not. I did not pick the, anybody up like that. That's crazy. I wouldn't do that. I've had, I've heard too many things. I mean, me and my wife were on the way to San Antonio one time, and there was like this guy broken down, and I I honestly wanted to stop and help, and I was just like. 
Now I'm not going to because I just you don't you don't know, man. You just nowadays it's hard to. If it was just me, or maybe maybe me and a couple of my guy friends or something, you know, it, it ain't gonna bother me, you know. I mean, what's he gonna do? You know, he's armed, we're armed, or you know, whatever this case may be. I'm not I'm not gonna be, you know, putting myself in a vulnerable position. You know what I mean? But like, if it's just me and my wife, no way, dude. Because I don't want this person sitting behind my wife or sitting next to me and you know and doing something. I just you just can't trust that, you know. Yeah, you know, people are just people are crazy, I know, and and then they'll mat. You, you can they can look like the nicest person in the freaking world, and they could be, they could have bodies in the freaking freezer in their house or something. You know, you just you just don't know. I just can't, you know, I just can't trust it. Exactly, you never know. You never know. So what else? What but, else do you got for us? You got anything else? Okay, speaking of big birds. Okay. There was one time we were outside, me and my husband were kicking back, we're on the porch, and we were just, you know, just talking away, you know, uh, telling each other how the day went. And we, my husband goes, looks up, and he goes, what is that? And I was like, I don't know. So I look up, and there's these birds, big big huge birds they're like six five or six of them huge we seen them coming and they were coming from the direction of fort shane and i was like w w how come these things are huge what are they you know and they were flying over us and i you just don't think of getting or nothing. Our phone was on a charger at that time, and we were just like, oh, what the heck, you know? So my husband goes, let's go to in the truck and let's go, because he had his keys. So we got in the vehicle, we backed up, we started going, and we was he's like, don't take your eyes off of these things. So we just kept going. We was looking, going through the town, we were looking up, we was watching this big old, like it, look like a California condor or a thunderbird what I see what we've seen its wingspan was very very big I mean they had to be like nine ten it was oh it was really crazy we're like doesn't anybody see this you know and so we were we were going and their wings just like you know like eagles they have their wings and they come down and you know and it's you know really gliding and these ones didn't do that they went up and they would come down really slow like it was just huge like they didn't really flap 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 you know they it was just like they just oh it was really crazy and we were like what so we was following it following them and they were really just going floating type of thing and we were like watching them and then we ran out of road right where they were going because they were going over this field so we stayed and pulled over and we were watching them and you know how you you know look at some bird and you look at in the distance you know you see it and it just disappears you know after so many um, mile or whatever and these ones didn't go out of sight for a very, very long time. That's how big they were. And we and were you said like five or watching six of them? them. There were five or six of them, yeah. And they were flying over our place or over Roosevelt. And we were wondering why isn't anybody seeing this? Because we were sitting there looking up and watching those things, and they were black. And you couldn't see the features on them, you know, or anything, you know, the eyes or anything like that. And um, they were just like, oh, gosh, so it they, was so they, crazy. They looked like ravens, but they were just nine to ten foot wingspan? Yes, yes. They were big. Oh, my husband, I asked him, how big was those birds, those things that we saw that day? And he said they had to have been nine nine ten wingspan i mean that's how big they were 
Yeah, they were big. And Did they like look I mean? Said, I don't know. We didn't even see no. Um, they were just jet black. We didn't see anything. We just saw them coming. And then we just saw, we were looking at the wings. That's what we were looking at. And we were like looking at it, and the the body was big, and when it the way they were they were like soaring, and then when they did their their wings and stuff, it went up and up and up, and and then it would come down really so like they were so heavy, and they just kept cruising on, like minding their own business, going to they were on a mission. I don't know what they were doing but yeah they were and then like i said they you just just seen them and like i said we we ran out of road we saw them going and they just disappeared like way later like oh gosh miles <laughs> and yeah it was really a sight to see really a sight to see and we will never forget that and, and so, how do you know yeah, that no one big. else saw them? How do you know nobody else saw them? Because they were just like driving around. No, oh, nobody you know, was you, reacting. Sometimes people don't look up, you know. And so, yeah, we were like, "Why isn't anyone seeing anything?" Maybe they did. I don't know, but we were just looking at it and uh, looking up at them, and they were like going over the, you know, they went right over Roosevelt. You know, we're like, what the heck? You know, are we the only ones seeing this? Because we didn't see any like people pointing or anything like that. But, you know, we really just seen that part where people just going on about their business. And then we just kept, you know, he's like looking and driving, looking and driving. And yeah, they were pretty big. And like, oh, it was crazy. It was really crazy to see something like that. Never, ever have I ever seen anything like that. And that's what really gets me seeing something like that. And I don't know. I don't know. They look like pterodactyls, as we were thinking that. It really looks like pterodactyls, you know? <laughs> so so they, didn't, they didn't look like ravens. They looked, they looked almost like uh, reptiles, like... I don't know. They weren't reptilian or anything. It just resembled a, this uh, uh, that thing, that dinosaur thing. But that, but yeah. it had feathers. Yeah, yeah, it did have feathers. Yeah, and that's it crazy did. because a lot feathers. of they're saying now that these uh, dinosaurs, a lot of the, uh, especially the ones that were that were flyers, had dad feathers. Yeah. yeah, they look like yeah, pterodactyls had feathers. That's what they're, uh, and it's weird. But people see this these pterodactyls that look like actual pterodactyls. The the, the ones that the, of the pictures we've seen growing up, you know, them having like uh, no feathers. You know, I don't know. It's 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 a weird thing. You know, they say they had feathers. They say they don't have feathers. I don't know. That's weird that you you would say pterodactyls with feathers. Because a lot of the scientists, I, I think the consensus now is that that's what they they had. Yeah, yeah. And I've gotten they were stories huge. out of South South Texas too of those. So you so you had a rampaging werewolf go through uh, the, the reservation the, town, the reservation <laughs> town, Fort Duchesne, right? Fort Duchesne, yes. Yeah, and then you had your uh, encounter with the thunder, with could have been Thunderbirds. Yeah, it could have been. Yeah, and then you had shadow people. So you've had a plethora of of things that that have gone on, and yeah. uh, I tell you what, man, I don't think I would want to hang out with you <laughs> out there. <laughs> I don't think I'd want to be out there. I can't imagine what that would be like. I just can't. I just I wouldn't want to be out there uh, hanging out yeah. and it's something like this. Yeah, it's crazy. I, it, there's a lot of things that happen here, especially the southern uh, part. There a place called uh, Lake Tawabi and you go on this dirt road and everybody that does come back or in that area they see UFOs or apparitions of their loved ones wait wait what apparitions time, of their loved ones yes yes do you, do you have any stories about that 
Yes, I do. <laughs> oh my gosh! Well, tell, let's let's hear it. I didn't know about this. Okay. Okay. Um, there was this, uh, these three got four guys. They were going down the road. They were going hunting, and as they were coming back, it was getting dark, and one of the guys had lost her brother not too long ago, maybe two months before they um they were coming up the road, and as they were going. They saw an apparition in the front of them, and they were like, oh, there's somebody, and it must be somebody broke down, and they need a ride or whatever. So he went, and they stopped, and this guy that was driving seen his brother standing in front of him, and he was like, that's my brother. And this passenger guy was telling him, don't go to it. Stay here. Don't go to him. He goes, but that's my brother. So he gets out of the vehicle and he's like trying to, he kind of goes a little ways, like the, the front of the hood. And this guy, the apparition was like, keep coming. He says, come here, my brother. He goes, come over here and hug me. And they were listening to this guy saying that. And the guy was like, he kind of stood there and he was like, some trance or whatever it might have been. And the guy's like, the passenger goes, get in the vehicle, get in the truck now. He says, and he was just like swearing at it. He wanted to get him out of the stupor he was in. So um, when he got back into the truck again, and started to um, put it in gear, this thing was just sitting there telling him to get out. Get out of the truck, come over and give your brother a hug. And he was just standing there and he walked off. And he, the guy was so, you know, shocked to see his brother standing in front of him. And he was like total apparition. They said it was like a total figure. No see through, no nothing. It was solid. Yeah, crazy. And 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 this happens like uh like like regularly like. No, this is the first time I've ever heard of that happen. And there was one time. Oh, this is crazy. One time, my brother was um camping in this area, and um. There's an old cabin, old house, I guess, that was down there. And my brother said that he was going to stay down there overnight while the others took off and went home. He said, I'm going to get up early in the morning. I'm going to go and um, get up and go and hunt some deer or elk. I can't remember what he said it was that season. So he said, I'm going to stay in this uh, house over here. And then when you guys come down, I'll be already out and uh, hunting but I will meet you so-and-so place. And they're like, oh, are you sure? It's like, yeah, sh yeah, I'm going to hang down here. So he uh, had a sleeping bag and everything because they had spent the, a few nights down there. So he grabbed it, grabbed some snacks, whatever. He was laying in this, there's like a living room, and then the doorway the living room, there's a fireplace in this living room. And then you go over to the left and there is a little room there that, you know, you could like sleep in. So he decided to go in that because the door wasn't on the on the um, door frame. So he went in the other room so that the, the air wouldn't hit him, he said. So he was sitting there, he was laying there. He was thinking, what am I going to do the next day? Where am I going to go? He was just, you know, thinking of a strategy and all that stuff. And then he's like, he heard something coming up the, uh, coming up the path. And he said it sounded like a horse. And when he was like, hmm, what the heck? Somebody coming in on a horse or what? It sounds like a horse, you know? And he said that then he heard uh, stomping, like a little feet stomp, and he heard a, you know, a weenie, like, you know, and he was like, somebody's here, you know? So he's like sitting up in his, um, in his sleeping bag, and he was, you know, looking, and he's like, I can't see anything. And then he said that 
he heard some footprint or footsteps coming up towards the door. And then he could see, because it was kind of like a little bit light, like, it, I don't know, he said it was a little bit of light there from the moon. And so he's like, he saw this guy coming in and he said, it looked like a cowboy, a cow guy, you know, a cowboy. And he leaned, he leaned, he's leaned down, stood in front of the fireplace and he started a fire. He started a fire and he couldn't believe that he was sitting there uh, watching this. And the guy, the cowboy, looked over to the left and looked at him and he just looked at him. And he was sitting there drying his, you know, putting his hands against the fire and everything like that. And my brother was freaked out. He said, I don't know what the heck that was. He just sat there. He didn't want to move. He didn't want to breathe. He didn't want to do anything, he said. And then when he was doing that, the guy got up and he walked out and then the fire died. The fire was gone. And then he got on the horse and the horse went away. And the next morning, he said when he got up, he went to go look. There was no remnants of ashes or anything like that. He went outside. There was no hoof prints or anything or footprints, nothing. Yeah. And he said he was totally freaked out. Never went down there for a long time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Imagine. Yeah. Because a lot <sighs> of things happen in that area. UFOs, everything. Yeah. Even UFOs follow people when they come back home from that area. Yeah. When when my cousin and uh, did did the uh, show about the uh, the reservation, uh, the Wind River Reservation up in Wyoming, when he did the show about that, that one of the uh, it was going to be a three parter because one of the stories he was going to tell were about UFOs, and we never did get to even get into that. Um, uh -huh. We just never got a chance to go back, and we're gonna, we're going to record with him again because he's still got he left a lot of meat on the bone, but there's a. You know, he, he was, he spent a lot of time out in the reservations. And so, um, yeah. And so he's got a lot of stories. There's a lot of weird stuff that goes on. I mean, I, yeah. I, you know, it's just, it's definitely a higher level of activity than people would suspect. Why? Yeah, I, I, I don't know what that is. I, I can't tell you. I don't, I don't. Yeah. There was a UFO incident that happened here. A couple of years ago, probably three years ago, and it was by the reservation. Everybody had seen this light, and they said it was a blown transformer, but everybody was like, no, it was not a blown transformer. This was something else, and it was near the Skinwalker Ranch, and they said that they seen it. Everybody seen it. I just heard about it, and then later on like the next week after that had happened it was printed in the newspaper and they said when they went down to go check out these where it landed and stuff they saw uh chicken chicken footprints down there chicken, where it landed. chicken footprints yeah chicken footprints and so they said it was something like that it was like a chicken footprints or something like that. that it would was, look, uh, look chicken like or something, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was three, three toed. Three toed, yeah. I got this one off of someone, <clears throat> and it's one of those things where I was working in, in, in Las Vegas temporarily. I was there, you know, I was spending some time. And, uh, I had I made friends with a security guard at this uh, casino. I used to go off of Rainbow Boulevard. There were these two casinos right there, and I used to go hang out at Texas Station. And there was a guy <clears throat> that I got to know, and he was former military, and he had he had told me um, that he knew a guy who worked uh, as a security. Uh, he did a, a security detail. And I guess it would be that guy's old roommate did security uh, for, at Skinwalker Ranch at one time. This is what the guy told me. And we started talking about weird stuff and and weird, uh, you know, things. Um, 
you know, a supernatural phenomenon. Let's put it that way. It was a conversation that was started by this bartender, female friend of ours. And the next thing you know, we're all sitting around talking about it. And, and we, we had gone to, I think, eat breakfast somewhere or something. This was a long time ago, back in the 90s. And I just remember this guy telling me, this was before I knew like really anything about Skinwalker Ranch. And he said, there's this place out in Utah and, and I guess his buddy's old or his old roommate's uh, buddy had done security there. And he said that it was a very terrifying place and that there was a story. And I, and I think I read this too, like after that, I remember going like, wait a minute, I heard this, you know, so I can't remember if I read it. And then they told it to me or he told it to me, then I read it. But I know I read it somewhere. And there was a story of this reptilian-looking creature that had been that had crawled up into a tree. And these two uh, dogman-looking uh, creatures, the only thing way I could describe them, upright canids, uh, had it treed. And the, the people on the ranch started to uh, drive out there to investigate it. And when they came upon the scene of these two, because there was a big commotion of these two uh, upright canids that they bounced. They went to the tree line, and they see this reptilian-looking thing up in the tree, and uh, they get out, and they go toward it, and it jumps down and disappears. Like It looked almost like it went down to the ground or something. It was weird. Uh-huh. That's the story that I was told, but the story I think that I read was was a little different. It was just like there was this dog man that was at the base of a tree and there was something in the tree i think is what i read and and that it, that, that the footprints resembled a three-toed like you said like almost like an avian type creature or or like maybe a, a reptile um because the, 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 the you know birds and reptiles are very similar a lot of times with their feet you know it's weird to have this you can very see that true. there's a connection you know between them yeah and but the and, and I can't remember like I said if th- that story that's what the story that I was told was different than the story that I read but th- they were similar enough to where I knew that that was the same incident so if you could maybe talk to him and and have him do some clarification on that because I don't want to I just I've always wondered about that because I, I know one time I was given a story uh, by some people who were driving through New Mexico and they saw and it, it actually was and it was near the Four Corners area. And I think it was oh, like okay. from New Mexico going up, like kind of crossing over into uh, Utah. Um, you know how there's the four corners right there? Yeah. And, and so they saw something run across the road that looked, they were like, whoa, it looked like a giant lizard. But it looked weird, almost like a, a, a lizard man running on all fours. And they oh, said wow. that it didn't look like it was moving that fast, but it was, which is weird. And then they see these two wolf-looking creatures, like, running behind it. Oh. And so, yeah, I've always wondered that. Like, they told me that, and I was like, can you give me any more details? All they could give me was a description of what these things look like. They couldn't tell you anything else. I mean, that was it. It was just, they saw that. And I was just like, yeah. okay, yeah. And I, and I kept uh, misplacing where the incident, and I finally went back and I looked. I said, I got to look at my notes here. And, and uh, yeah, it was... You know, it was weird, um, but I I don't know what to make of that. I mean, I've had some weird uh, stories. I've gotten some weird stories. I know that uh, I had gotten a story out of Florida of uh, these dogmen supposedly killing an alligator, like taking it taking an alligator out of a pond near a golf course and literally killing it. Oh. Wow. Yeah, yeah, and I and I told that story. Wow. You know, Are they on that another strong? podcast. You know, it depends on the on the dog man, and I guess it depends on the gator. Supposedly, um, you know, this guy. I don't know if he was being, you know, if he. I mean, he's he was an older, he's like sixty years old. I don't know why he would just say in a, in a retirement community, "Hey, I'm just going to make up a story." But he and his wife told me this this story, and I retold it on a particular person's podcast. But it, it he, he it was like this this uh, they heard this horrible like just howling one night like and it sounded like something being killed or attacked and and there was a giant really large gator that lived in a in the pond uh on the edge of this golf course and then they're a retirement community and then supposedly um 
few days later, they found that that gator like just just tore apart and like uh, you know thrown all over the place. And so uh-huh. it was a large gator too, like a very large male that had taken up residence there. And I asked the guy what he thought happened. He said, "Well, he goes, I think them wolves killed it." Like they went in there and they and they got revenge because they think that that it may have killed one of the smaller ones, and so they went in and they killed it. So there seems to be some sort of uh, I don't I don't know if there's like uh, maybe they got smoke or something, you know? <laughs> maybe they got beef. I don't know what their deal is, but every now and then I'll get huh. stories of reptilians and 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 these werewolf type creatures clashing. But you'll also get stories of them working together. Like I've gotten abduction stories of them working in tandem with other beings, you know. And so I, I, I don't know what we're dealing with. It, it's, it seems like when you open the door and you walk through and you, you go down that slide of the rabbit hole, you grasp yeah. it. And sometimes you'll get a something. You'll think, hey, this is an answer here. And then it'll just turn into another question. So. Yeah, exactly. It's so hard to to fathom what we're actually dealing with, and so you, yeah, having okay, so you had this all these these incidents happen, but you've never actually seen a dogman, werewolf, or Bigfoot. No, I I just heard Bigfoot. No, yeah. he, you know, I just heard it. I smelled him. And the uh, dogman werewolf. There's, I asked uh, Linda Godfrey one time if there was any reports of any uh, dogman in this area, and she had no idea if they had any. I know there was one person that did say they had an incident in uh, one area, and so I don't know. You know, if there's anything like that up here, we just, they're just skinwalkers and what we, what they saw and heard in uh, um, the community, what they, what they, you know, shot at didn't, it was a werewolf, you know? Yeah. And so, yeah. And um, there was another uh, thing that my ex-husband had seen and it happened by the river and this river has so many things there it could be apparitions it could be you know animals you haven't seen or something like that you know this stuff that is just right by this area is pretty much um i guess say haunted uh anyway my husband my ex-husband he and his friend was going hunting and it was deer season and they decided to go down in this river bottom and and go hunting for a deer and it had rained that night a little bit and um they came and they crossed it it goes down to like a a road and there's fence on both sides to um bushes on the east side you cross this little canal or wooden bridge and they go down and they park they decided to go and walk from there as they were walking from there they heard all these coyotes yipping and hollering and you could tell that they was chasing something so they just just you know just didn't mind that they were used to it and as they went they went and found they killed a deer they said um, they didn't want to get it. It was getting, it was dark, so they didn't want to get it. They said, let's just come back for it tomorrow. I'm pretty tired. Let's just go home. So they decided just to leave the deer there. So they got in their vehicle. They heard uh, these coyotes yipping up again, and they're like, they're really chasing something, you know? And so they got in their vehicle, they backed up and they say we're going up this little tiny hill and over the um, over the wood bridge and it kind of went down a little bit. Now this road, it's sandy. It's loose dirt, sandy. And, um, and then the, the both sides, they have fence on each side and these big brushes, like willows or whatever on these, um, both sides of the fence and some had these stickers where berries berry bush or whatever they're really tall and they saw an eye shine at first 
his friend says, stop. There's something over there, it's eye shine or something. And then the, the coyotes, they stop yipping. And then this thing jumps out over this fence into the middle of this dirt road. And it was big, it was taller than their hood, they said. And it was a Chevy truck, he said it was taller than his hood. It was gray, a little bit of silver, he said that was in there a little bit of gray, but it was it was gray, and his he said it was uh, he had a little tuss on his ears. I remember that he said that, and then his eyes were a different color, and he said it looked like a back of the thing looked like a hyena, but the, when it went more over in the back of it, it had a, like a lynx tail. And then when it went down, it had like big legs and stuff. He said it just looked at him. It didn't, it didn't blink or nothing like that. It just looked at him and their their eyes were just like big. And he said it was like two olives in a plate, you know, looking at my friend because he said his eyes were so wide open, you know. And they said it just leaped from there, the willow bushes on the other side of this fence. And so they waited for a little bit before they were gonna get out. So they got out, they took their gun, they got out and they were, and, and they put the lights on bright. They went out and they were looking at, and they said the, the, um, the paw print wasn't even a paw print. He said it was a big thumbprint. It didn't have no claws or nothing showing or anything. It was just a big old thumbprint. And so they kind of looked at each other like, what the heck was that? You know, they could, you know, their minds are all freaked out and everything. Then all of a sudden, you, they said the coyotes started really yipping, but they sounded different. They just yipping, but they sounded different and they, they were just all over. They were howling. They were all over. And he said, I've never heard so many coyotes at that one time. So they decided they kind of got kind of worried, scared. They got back in their vehicle. And as they were, they went. They went. And they came home to me and they was telling me about it. And I was like, oh, no, you know, he's like, we'll go back and see. And I was like, I don't know if I want to go there. But when we did go back there, they had kind of ran over the, the print and stuff. But you could see the tip of it, of where the print was. And, yeah, it, it, it was huge. Yeah, it was his his hand, his hands are big and it was bigger than his hand. But they said it. It was just weird to see something like that. They never, it looked alienish is what they were saying, the way the eyes were and everything. And uh, the way they looked at him, he didn't see no teeth, it didn't snarl, it didn't do anything. It just looked at him, yeah. So that was one of the things that he says that he saw strange that came out of that river, river bottom there. And yeah, they just, see phantom dogs down in that area um you can hear cries of a woman crying in that area you know just things like that they're just there there's a pack of really bad res dogs in that area that are so mean and um yeah there's things that happen in that river bottom but he says this is one thing i never thought i would ever see come out of that but yeah it was bigger than that fence. He just jumped right over that fence. No problem, he said. And just jumped into that area and went into the thicket. Yeah, and you could just see the like little trail that he went through. Yeah, it was huge. <laughs> so I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> Let's go now. <laughs> I don't want to be around here. So yeah, we left after that. And oh, and then his, the deer that they had, they said it was uh, shredded up. There was no longer, you know, edible. Yeah. So yeah, they it, it was torn up. And so, yeah, crazy. So, so that's, go ahead. Oh, no, no, I was going to say, so, so is, is, is that, uh, 
conclude your your, your uh, yeah. That's your that's your your stories, your adventures out there. There's a lot more stories out here and from other eyewitnesses that have seen some stuff. And yeah, there's many, so many things that happen out here. But yeah, that's one of the, that's the last one I want to just say because this save some later, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> save some meat on the bone. That's what I always say. Yeah, these meat on bone and not overdose you on all kinds of craziness, but. <laughs> well, I think it seems like that's what most of the people uh, want to do is, is be overdosed on the mad stories. Cause like, it's like the minute I start to talk to like, get cracking, start telling stories. You know, they, they don't want to hear nothing but stories. A lot of people, you know, yeah. but I like to, I like to, to, to make the show more, you know, like, like we're all just talking and having a good time. You know, we're not just out here just, robotically yeah. telling stories but you know it just seems like a lot of people want but you definitely brought some uh some good stories and i'm glad that you uh that we talked and that we were able to get you to come on the show and hopefully that this uh does your your stories justice because you had some really good things to say and it's very interesting you and you and and if you if you don't mind me asking um you you don't have to give me your exact age but around how old are you I am fifty three years old. Fifty three years old, and and you've lived on in in and around <clears throat> Fort Duchesne, that area of uh, Roosevelt, Fort Duchesne. You've lived there your whole life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, so you're very familiar with that, with all the area and the folklore and all that. Oh, definitely. My dad used to tell all this stuff because my dad used to be a medicine man. Yeah. Very well respected. The community knows who he is. Is very a respected man. He ran the Sundance as a chief. He ran the Bear Dance as a chief. Yeah, he was very well respected. So, yeah, he was a very well known medicine man. People came to him for wisdom and stuff like that. And yeah, he he adopted us. We were when we were small. He adopted us into the and so. Yeah, I'm very honored that I have been raised by him. Yeah, I had a, I have a buddy who's a, who's native, but he's Lapan, and uh, uh -huh. he told me he goes, yeah, my my dad's my dad's a medicine man, or he used to be a medicine man, and I was like, oh really? Like, yeah. you know, and and, and uh, I didn't realize what he was talking about, and so I said, I said, well, what kind of uh, stuff did he do? He's like, well, he sold medicine, you know, basically he sold his his goods or whatever. And uh, I was like, "Oh, really? Like what?" And he goes, "Well, co well, cocaine and and, and marijuana." So <laughs> I was like, and he's, "I started laughing." I was like, "Okay, all right." That, <laughs> so <laughs> like he sold bad medicine. I was like, "Okay, yeah." So he was selling, you know, drugs. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> oh my I was like, and that, I guess in that case, no. when I was born, my dad was a medicine man too. But uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, and eventually he. He quit, but uh, he quit being a medicine man. But yeah, my my great grandmother on my on my mom's side w was uh, Comanche, and her her dad was uh, supposed to have been a medicine man. And, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool that the uh, a lot of the natives didn't didn't have uh, a uh, written language. You know, most of them was word of mouth, and they would pass down the stories. Um, that's how they. Uh, told you know that's how traditions were were upheld was through the stories you know yeah. it's sad because it seems like the younger generations are becoming more um so I see the same thing with like my godson he's Vietnamese and I see like his generation getting further away from their culture you know getting further away from uh, like, and it's happening with the natives too the native cultures are, are are evaporating because the young people don't have any interest in keeping the stories and and the uh folklore alive you know and i've talked to some of these younger people I actually had a guy I worked with you know for a while and he just not interested in in the uh his heritage i mean it's weird it, it's kind of sad because i think i was taking more of an interest in in, in hearing about the stories of seven eventually i ended up meeting his <clears throat> older brother who was way older than him by like 50, like about 15 years older and then and he was a little more like he knew a lot more 
And then through him, I met their uncle, and then he had all kinds of stories that he told. He's Navajo, but like like Scorp is is the Scorpion's part Navajo too. But they 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 would tell. He would tell me all these stories and all these things, and and they had all these traditions and stuff. And I was like, in this other kid that I worked with, and nothing to take nothing away from him, but he just his interests were literally hanging out at the club and uh, just uh, you know driving. He liked to w- work on and drive fast cars in his in his uh, spare time. He just did not care to. He didn't care about any play video games. Didn't care about the freaking traditions or anything. I mean, it was like. Yeah. And, and we're getting, you know, further away from that. I mean, you, you know, I was talking to a group of, of young Indians the other day, and I'm not talking about Indians as in this, the, the misterm for Native American. I'm talking about Indians from India. And uh, I was yeah. at this place called uh, Pinballs that I like to go to, and it's it's a like a, it's kind of like a Dave and Buster's, but like a lot better. It's here in Austin. It's an awesome place, folks. I'm gonna plug them right now. I'll tell you, they're not paying me, but it's a it's a cool place, cool destination. So if you're ever in Austin, check it out. <clears throat> but uh, I was talking to a group of, of young guys from, from India, and we were talking about uh, their history and the folklore or whatever, and I was only interacting with one of them and the other. It was about five of them at a table, and it was one in particular that we were talking about. He had a shirt on. I think it said Surf Kal- the Kali Yuga, and I thought that was pretty cool. So I started talking to him. I said, oh, the Kali Yuga. And we started talking about the Kali Yuga and what it was, what it meant. And it was him and this girl, and they knew all about that and their tradition and their culture and everything. And she actually had just moved back from India. But there were four other dudes there that were all Indian. Um, I believe they are Punjabi. And they didn't know a lick of anything that we were talking about. Like, they had no clue. And I was like, so what do you guys wow. consider yourselves? And they were like, well, we consider ourselves Hindu. And I was like... So I started to talk about, you know, like the Gita, the Bhagavad Gita, and we were talking about the, you know, the different, uh, the, the yugas and so, and they had no idea what we were talking about. I mean, it was just wow. like clueless. And I'm like, you talking like these guys were college grads, like three of them, I think, I think I, uh, all but two of them were, so it'd be three of them were college grads and they worked for computer companies. And then one of them was in, it was pre-med, he was still going to school. And we, we started talking about all kinds of stuff, uh, geopolitics, things like that, because I was kind of taking a break from playing the games or whatever. And uh, I was talking to these guys. This was a while back, you know, and um, I just remember thinking, wow, I mean, these guys really don't, you know, they don't know much about their heritage. I mean, it's it's really, it's sad, you know, I mean, regardless of what, where you're from or what your, your, your background is you know it's it's good to know your roots where you come from uh you know what your ancestors believed and 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 i think that stuff follows you for generations and when you run into something that's uh strange or weird you know you're not going to have any idea what you're dealing with at all because you didn't pay attention when the elders were trying to tell you this is what this is because i know from experience when i was a kid 15 years old, I thought all those stories of the Ambre Lobo and the Cadejo, and I thought, nah, it's a bunch of bull crap, you know, the, the Cucuy, La Llorona, La Chusa. There's, there's a boogeyman for the water, for the air, for the land. Everywhere you go, there's a boogeyman, you know, and I thought it was all just a bunch of bull crap. And I found out that it wasn't, <laughs> you know, and uh, <laughs> I learned that there, that there's some reasons why these the elders would tell you, hey, there's stuff out there. You need to be real careful, you know. I'm, you know, my dad's yeah. side of the family. When my great great uncles would tell me, "Stay away from that holler down there in the bottom land. Don't go down there." You know, there was a reason for that. And, you know, and and same thing on my mom's side. You know, don't don't go to certain areas at night. And don't go run around uh, playing because Ambre Lobo, you know, is is it runs the streets and it, it it'll it'll catch you. And it's basically uh, a werewolf is what it is. And and so I had no idea. You know, I was just as ignorant and, and, you know, whatever. So you, like me, you know the truth. You know that these things exist and that they're out there. And it's good that you have told these stories and you keep the traditions alive uh, um, because a lot of people won't talk about this stuff too, though. Once it happens, they, they, they become ultra superstitious if they weren't before. 
and they, yeah. they, yeah, they, oh, if you talk about it, it'll invite it, you know. But as oh, a yeah. as a Christian, though, I mean, if if you have faith and you're strong in it, I mean, th- then you're protected. I, I really, really believe that. Now, I do too. I was talking to a lady yesterday from Washington, and this guy from a very prominent Bigfoot show. I'm not going to say his name. He told her that these creatures will not hurt you, that they won't do anything to you. And I'm just like, that is the most irresponsible thing to tell somebody because even if you looked at it from a standpoint of like, oh, they're just like a wild animal, it, it will, and a wild animal will absolutely hurt you. It will kill you. And if you look at it from like, oh, well, they're intelligent, semi-articulate, you know, still same, same uh, thing applies. But and if you look yeah. at it from like they're a and if they're they're a supernatural being, supernatural creature, you really don't know what you're messing with. You have no idea. So to sit there and tell somebody that is like just the height of, of being irresponsible to me. I mean, I just can't imagine telling somebody that, you know, and this person was having encounters and with their kids and grandkids. I'm going like you can't sit there and tell somebody. That nothing's going to happen to them. I mean, because you don't know that. That's a very irresponsible thing to do. Because I, I, I believe um, that a lot of these encounters, uh, I think things happen to people and then they get explained away. And I know, yeah. you know, from talking to, to people, and I'm sure you know this, uh, the BIF, you know, the Bureau of Indian Affairs. Indian Affairs, yeah. yeah. Uh, the, I'm sorry, the BIA. I'm, BIA. <laughs> the BIA. Yeah, I'm so tired. The BIF, the BIA, is so the BIA, you know, that they, 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 you know, told my cousin and his friend, you know, like the, the, that these things exist and, you know, and, you know, it's better that you just don't talk about it. They didn't say it like, oh, it's going to talk it up and bring it up. It's just better because you don't have people looking at you, you know what I mean, yeah. in a certain way, you know, and, and so – that was their kind of their advice, you know, was just, just don't talk about what you saw just because that way you're not in the line of fire of being asked questions and things like that. You know, it wasn't about something coming and seeking revenge, although that could be another issue. You know, I think it's very, yeah. I think it's very interesting that you were <laughs> hanging around on Skinwalker Ranch and didn't even really uh, realize like where you were at, you know, <laughs> and so. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and it's very dangerous for a Ute, considering that that the curse there is was specifically for the Utes, you know, place there. But, yeah. But, uh, but uh, it was Crazy. very, very good having you on the show and very good talking to you. I enjoyed our conversation that we had uh, a few nights ago, and, and I enjoyed yeah. the, the, the the talk we had today, and I had we had fun. Yes. Yep. And I appreciate that you had me coming on and telling these stories because, like you said, you know, the elders had very good stories. They're there, they're for there for a reason. Mm-hmm. And that's what my dad he talked to us about all kinds of sorts of things, you know, because there are things out there that we have never discovered, or you know, there's just things out there that will harm us. And that was the reason why he told us the stories that were around. I mean, he used to go out to the mountains. So when he knew that Bigfoot was watching them and stuff with my brothers, he would sit there and say, hey, we're going to leave. We'll leave you alone. We'll go hunt somewhere else. And so they would, mm-hmm. you know, because they have respect for things like that. And so. I think it's interesting yeah. too, like, like, uh, you know, when you talk to people, like I, I, another friend of mine who I worked with uh, briefly, he, 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 I met him through Scorpion, but he, he was Filipino and he was having uh, like these issues with this, I don't know, like an entity, I don't want to get into it because he may actually tell the story someday. And it was like an entity that was harassing him and I actually knew what that was and he didn't. <laughs> And he's Filipino. Yeah. And so we started talking and then he goes, well, I'm going to ask my stepbrother about that. So he did. And his stepbrother explained him what it was. And he was like, wow, Josh Turner told me. And I was like, well, and, and, and it's weird because he grew up, that's his culture. That should be something that he should know. You know, it was an Oshwing and, and that he didn't know what that was, you know? Hmm. Um, yeah. And so it's interesting because I had like, like when we were talking earlier about Bigfoot, I had heard it being called that that name, you know, that, that the yeah. Coco or whatever. And you didn't know what that was. Um, you know, and so maybe I was right about that name. Maybe I was wrong. If you could, uh, 
maybe double check and see if I'm correct about that. I don't know if that's if that's correct or not. I might have been saying it completely wrong or whatever, but uh, that's what I was told by by someone um, that uh, is a Ute, and, and so that may be uh, a mispronunciation or whatever. But um, I, I, I I look at all these different cultures and and the different beliefs and all the different cultures, and it just fascinates me. You know, it just absolutely fascinates me. And I think that everyone listening at home, do yourself a favor, read, you know, and, and find material where you can learn about the, the uh, past, the cultures of the Persians, you know, the, the, the culture of, of the, of the, the uh, Middle Eastern peoples, uh, the, in, the people from India the Chinese, they have all kinds of amazing stories, you know. Uh, like I said, my friend, the Filipinos have stories. The the Australians and the na- and the natives there, the natives Amer- the Native Americans here, all the way from the East Coast to the West Coast. You know, I'm talking like from the Ir- the Iroquois uh, all the way to the uh, the Algonquins, all the way to the Klamath. I mean, they have stories after upon stories, and there's traditions upon traditions, and just uh, uh, you can pour through these these stories for hours. And hours and hours, and entertain yourself just just learning uh, about these different um, myths, and then looking at how closely related they are. You can read a Celtic myth, and then you'll you'll see how closely related it is to a Viking myth, and then the Viking myth, mm-hmm. how closely related it is to the Native American myths, and and you just go, wow, there had to have one time been a beginning that we all shared. I mean, it had to be. Because we all have the same experiences, no matter what culture we are. But it, I love having uh, people to come on and talk about uh, their experiences from their cultural perspective, and I and I that I appreciate you coming on and talking about it. And, and that's a it's a really cool thing. I'm glad we were able to do that tonight. Yes, me too. Did you have oh, any closing? You. Did you have any closing remarks? Anything to say? Uh, well, the thing I want to say is that listen to your elders, mm-hmm. listen to their stories, carry on the tradition, tell it to your kids, your your children, your grandchildren, you know, because that's how things you are aware of when you go someplace, keep away from the places they tell you to keep away from. You know, you really got to tune in to the elders because they know what they're talking about. And so, yeah, that's basically it. Be careful, you know, not every animal or dog, man, werewolf, Bigfoot are friendly. Yeah. You know, they're not pets, no. you know, they're dangerous animals. You know, they're dangerous and just be careful and, you know, your surroundings, be very, you know, vigilant to those things. And yeah. Just be careful out there. Don't seek stuff that you don't, you know, you know, you don't want to be, you know, <laughs> traumatized. You want to see something, you know, and there's a lot of things out here on the reservation that has come up and um, just, you know, you have to be careful. Yeah. Be cognizant Very of your careful. surroundings and. I, yeah. I discourage people strongly from going and looking for these things, but people are going to do what they're going to do. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's crazy. unfortunate. But uh, I appreciate it from PRT, everybody. Thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in, Josh Turner and uh, Anthony here with uh, with sh- with uh, Shotzi. And uh, everybody, uh, we want to tell you thank you for listening. Thank you for subscribing. Please hit the like button on our YouTube channel. Even if you don't listen to us on YouTube, always subscribe is always nice. And uh, like and uh, subscribe to our our channel, our groups on Facebook. And from everybody at PRT, good night. <laughs>